we are uh, we're good to go, I think, but we'll have to see. All right, yeah. So yeah, we I said that played the Sonic trailer, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, just uh, the new one. It was actually looked pretty good, honestly. It looked a little um, cheesy, but I don't think that's really surprised to anybody. One and two, I uh, have a feeling yeah. it's they're still. I don't know. Uh, I was really impressed once again by the first one just actually giving us what we asked for in a lot of ways, I guess you could say. I mean, not totally, obviously. There's always going to be some level of, like, we don't get something or someone doesn't get what they want. But, man, I mean, as right. far as all that kind of stuff goes, I think they did so well. Honestly, just extremely yeah, well. Good. Yeah, I like, uh, I like that we're getting Knuckles. Um, I know we got already kind of was teased with Tails already from, uh, I think, the first Sonic. Uh, I think there was an after credits, and I think Tails was... I think they he was teased. I can't remember. Yeah, I think um, so as well. He was teased uh, but in the Knuckles other one. Knuckles was for sure one that they kind of confirmed because I think that was uh, going to be voiced by um, Alba. Is that so who it is? The... That, that's yeah, such an interesting voice, voice. I actually, I got to look this one up because it really is like a, an interesting voice. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, if I want to make sure that it that I know who it is next time because it was very distinct. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was him that was doing this voice. I think everyone he was even calling him the sexy Knuckles. Because <laughs> he was being voiced by him. Yeah, yep, yeah, nope. Sonic 2 director loves Idris Elba's sexy Knuckles. Yeah, see. <laughs> I think it's interesting because they're once again doing that thing we talked about with major actors voicing in these things. Kind of the same with Chris Pratt and Mario, I guess you could say. Yeah. But, yeah, that yeah. they were. Uh, there was a meme the other day, and there somebody posted it because they had showed off the new Jurassic uh, World domain pictures and stuff. And uh, one of them was Chris Pat kind of taming a uh, one dinosaur, and um, somebody had posted it saying, "Oh, look at the new Mario movie." <laughs> oh, look at <laughs> how it's like, no, yes, you guys are terrible. Mario, <laughs> Mario. <laughs> they are. They're terrible, but it's they're also funny. They're so, very funny. It's saying, oh, look at yeah, that. was pretty movie. funny that they did that. <laughs> well, look at how, yeah, um, it actually uh, it looks good. Knuckles, we get some tails action, that. and I'm also happy that we kind of get uh, Jim Carrey back, but also we kind of get him more in that classic uh, Doctor he, Robotnik. He does look. look a little more like Robotnik. I will say, and I think that it's not. There's no way to really get around it. Is that he's not thick? I guess you could say like Robotnik yeah. was. Yeah, but I'm definitely yeah, on that one. But I don't think there's much we can do about that. Sort of getting Jim Carrey in a fat suit, which would probably take away from his dynamic movement as an actor. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. No. Uh, yeah, I was. I was I wasn't happy that they at least you know like said put on the the mustache and then the bald because he wasn't bald in the first. No, he wasn't. No, he wasn't bald in the first one either. No. So I was happy to. They, see him yeah, they transformed have the mustache him. And the I'm bald not gonna lie. Actually, even though it's more classic, I think the the mustache is actually really looks like shit. It's classic. It's very. It looks so bad. Like. The 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 other one wasn't that great either, but this one in the new trailer, I was like, God damn, bro, that mustache looks like it went through the dryer and then fucking got beat up by a gang and fuck no. Uh, but besides that, like I said, I do like that they made him, I think, a little more visually accurate. I think he kind of has... He's not... Character-wise, he doesn't play Dr. Robotnik, I feel like, at all. But that's just me. I feel like he's very much a mad scientist character the way he plays robotnik uh -huh. as opposed to the classic robotnik botnik which is an evil scientist yeah um not uh, to say he's not bad or whatever but yeah so i mean it's not bad either i think it actually works really well for the cartoony feeling of the what they're doing yeah no i i feel like yeah especially for like yeah they're kind of going more to that cartoonish kind of cartoony kind of feel than uh, you know, Robotnik, like you said, kind of more evil, kind of genius, kind of yeah. Because there is times where he can be a little, a little like I said, evil geniusy. <laughs> this yeah, one, like this one's kind of more a little goofy at times. Yeah, there. he's eccentric, is how, what I would say. He's very much got you know, he's he's a little wild for Robotnik. Robotnik was, I mean, he was funny and he was right, but it wasn't like. It wasn't the same. It was just not bad. Like I said, I think it works just fine. Especially because I actually even think Sonic himself is more comic-y than he is in any of the comics or cartoons most of the time. 
Like, uh-huh. Sonic is not a joke character most of the time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, exactly. No, um... Yeah, definitely. Uh, when's, his, uh, when's the release date? It's next year, right? But yeah, is next it, uh, year. Springtime or summer? When was it? I can't remember. I know something I wanted to watch was October, but let, let's see. Sonic the Hedgehog 2 release date. Uh, April. Oh, actually, it's right around my birthday. Maybe go see it right after that. Okay. So it's not too far far off then. Um, well, let's see. Um, I did too. You know, also it's cool that we did get to see now that they were going to involve the emerald uh, uh, crystals as well, too. So I kind of, you know, I'm glad they're getting more involved in the uh, Sonic universe and we get to see a little bit more of that universe instead of the real world because there was kind of some scenes here and there. We got to see a little bit of... But I guess the Sonic world. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we did, and it's going to be interesting. I don't know how exactly they're going to go about that or what the, the story is going to be, because obviously Sonic has a big mythos and a huge storyline between the games oh, yeah. and the comics and the Definitely, TV yeah. show yeah. and et cetera, et cetera. So much, yeah. Well, I always I think mean, about it like... Last... Well, oh, I was going to say, it's one of those shows where I know there's a bunch, but I can never name more than half the characters, like even close, because there's yeah. a bunch of... So many... It's not even that it's like I feel like the, their popular characters are like well well known and they're not their other characters are just not known at all. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's like Sonic Knuckles, Tails, yeah, Amy, Rouge, yeah. Uh, no, what's they, they Cream? Have, yeah, they they have a big roster that's for sure that are not really unrecognizable because yeah, I read the comics too from when they rebooted with IDW and uh, you can. Uh, Definitely, definitely tell. There's a lot of characters. Oh, I yeah. like. I don't know who that is. Oh yeah, that the, is, like, dude. The <laughs> comics themselves added so many, and they really expanded uh, Sonic's mythos, like big compared to like the games and mm-hmm. the um everything else. Because like, man, I remember reading the comics back when I think Dark Horse made them. I think it was Archie. Yeah, Archie was it Archie? Comics was doing them. Yeah. I think they went through they both. Had the rights. Cause, it might have been, yeah. Because he's been around. Uh, but either way, both the comic runs uh, were crazy. Yeah, they uh, definitely are. I know uh, IDW is, I think, like on issue. No. Is the reboot maybe issue? I think they're like on 40 now, issue 40. So they've been going pretty hard now with that too. And uh, they've been not too bad stories. I heard the Archie stories are a little bit better. Um, I'd guess so. When I read them, they were pretty fucking good. Honestly, they were probably on par with like most mainstream comic book stories. What I, from what I remember, they were fucking, they were kind of serious for kids comics. From what I remember, not yeah. like no, yeah, there was some serious ones. Maybe out. maybe not like uh, Super Saiyan Goku. Ev- yeah, or, uh, Super Saiyan Sonic. Yeah, there was stuff like that, but it was more than that. There were like wars and like it wasn't like this kid friendly it was fine for kids but it wasn't like this super kiddish plot line or anything it was like this whole thing and that's why i said like even in the comics etc robotnik was like he really he wasn't like super evil scientist necessary but he would definitely fall under that kind of like scientist who is also evil or evil person who is also scientist i'm not sure which one and he was like he really, he really did try to get him. It was, it was some interesting stuff, but I don't know. I, I'm just happy that uh, they're still making them and that Sonic's still like. It's one of those things we talked about where lately it's like nothing really dies as long as it has fans. You know what I mean? As long as there's a, a dedicated group of fans somewhere, it it gets another chance, and if it gets another chance, it can make another good like piece of material, and then it keeps going. You know? I don't know. Yeah, definitely, definitely, yeah. Um, well, let's see what uh what was uh what else has come out since then. I mean, we could, you know, we can't really talk about Spider Man just yet because I do want to go through that one just yet with uh, the details until maybe I don't know maybe two weeks or so, and then we can kind of talk about that. Yeah, that was gonna say we can't really do super detailed, but we can kind of maybe go over the general like vibes of the movie. Um. Yeah, definitely. So it was cool. I went to see with my cousin because he had a, he had rented out a whole row, I guess, and then nobody showed up. So he's uh-huh. just like, "Do you want to come and try to fill up the seats?" I was like, oh, "Yeah, really? yeah." I was like, "Really?" No, but no, he got no. him at like ten 
ten twenty on a Saturday, so it was like, oh, uh, so yeah, I mean, kind of, kind of late, yeah, a little bit late, you know, especially for a long movie like that. Um, which even like we brought someone, he's like, y'all didn't tell me this was a two and a half hour movie. I was like, yeah, it, it's a two and a half hour movie, bro. Yeah, it's a long movie. <laughs> well, I didn't know. That's kind of what we ex- like at this point. That's what we would expect from Marvel epics, right? They're no longer in a, pl- a spot where a big final movie like this can be short. It, it has to be well done and like decently length. It didn't. It takes time to get through that amount of story. And even then, I feel like some of the story was mm-hmm. kind of moved up and down. Uh, having said that, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was really good. Um, trying to... Yeah, I really liked it. Um, I really, my favorite part was uh, that they were kind of getting away from uh, him being like the Iron Man golden boy. And then towards the end, uh, which is my favorite. I mean, they kind of did. I feel like they didn't. I, I feel like they never really should have put it on that heavy in the first place. I know why they did, and I just don't think it was necessary. Because they did it to connect the fan bases, right? But they didn't need to do that. Spider-Man was bigger than Iron Man even at that point still. I don't think there was ever a point, even to this day, that Iron Man has ever been bigger than Spider-Man. For, like, even a moment. Um, So I think they fucked that up pretty bad. And I actually was talking to someone today because they were like, did you see, how was it? And I was like, it's good. And they're like, I haven't seen the other new Spider-Man movies. How are they? And I was like, they're okay. They're not, that's the thing, like, thinking back on those movies, they're good, but. They're good. I like, I like them because it was, uh, so I like Sam Raimi's because Sam Raimi got, got it good with the whole drama, emotional stuff. Here's the He's thing, Sam, Sam Raimi made a, that was a good. cinematic really movie. Good from that. Yeah. yeah, that's good there. Now, Andrew Garfield was kind of good too. That was more truthful. He was kind of a little more kiddish teenager to me on that one. It wasn't like he said most of it. Uh, starting to cut off really, a little really, bit. There. I loved him because he um, was really good. I think he, so I really liked Tom Holland the most because I think he really played like a true to me at least true uh true peter parker at that age and because i mean he was he is uh it was a kid when they hired him tony well, McGuire, they do a, and yeah they did mid 20s <laughs> yeah tony so. uh, yeah the toby mcguire was too old to ever play spider-man and somehow pulled it off um andrew garfield's weird for me it's different even than that though because like it's even beyond like the spider-man because how I good mean, each he, they, they... Uh, how good each Spider-Man even depend is different than whether or not their movie was good because Tobey Maguire is pretty good and the Sam Raimi's were pretty good, but Spider-Man Three was garbage. You know, actually, to tell you the truth, it, it was actually it is good. It's just literally the last maybe the last thirty minutes is where it dies off. The, the, the moment they got yeah. Foreman to be Venom, they fucked that movie up. I'm gonna be well, honest. There's no where it started to fall off. But the the, the whole kind of... yeah, the, the, that's the problem though. If the end's bad and the beginning's bad, and the middle piece yeah. isn't good, it's not. It's not but, good. It it was bad, bro. Yeah, like there's no some point though. Like the, I the don't critics wrote, it's the lowest rated Spider Man in history. It's or no, actually oh, yeah, second I'm rated. That, but I'm like, just saying, so... no, it it was it was a good movie at the beginning, but then yeah, like I said, oh, just I mean, a few it was bad decisions. It was okay. Made it good. Um, there were a lot watched, of bad. I watched it yesterday, and I've, I, I've I watched like, it. You know, this a bunch, wasn't as yeah. bad as I thought it was. I just did, like I said, the last thirty minutes is just like okay, yeah, this is I'm not gonna lie. For me, that whole it. movie is pretty bad. I mean, I, I remember it. I've watched it several times. I watched it recently. Um, there are a shit ton of mistakes through the whole movie between casting, character choices. The only accurate part of that movie, honestly, is Sandman. Sandman is probably the only good part of the movie. The the new Goblin is is well, doesn't live up yeah, to the old where Goblin. I was it was saying where everything was good at because. Uh, that's really where Sam Raimi did good, and then really it was the producers, yeah, Venom and wanted I'm, Gwen Stacy in there man. at the same time as well. It's and, it's too well, much. No, they already said that, that that they already said it wasn't it wasn't Sam Raimi's fault. He, they already said producers came out and said, "Hey, we fucked up. It wasn't Sam's fault." <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna lie. Whenever people that. do that, I always wonder because I know plenty of directors who just put their foot down and either don't make the movie or then the. They get smart and do what the director says, but either way, the the trilogy would have been better had that movie just not, not been made. Because I know. <laughs> 
I don't know. It would have been great. Just like I said, if there wasn't a lot of interference, a lot of creative no, no, differences. It's... Like I said, Sam Raimi is a huge, huge, huge Spider-Man fan. No, like, and I'm not blaming loves... him, but that movie is garbage. Regardless, like it, it sucks that it has his name on it. It's garbage, man. It's it's super trash. It's got no, terrible know. reviews. No. His vision for it was yeah, probably but I, good, I... but by the time the producers finished it, it's like a sick. It's like a DC yeah. movie, honestly, almost, <laughs> which is yeah rough like yeah, i said i mean me, it's like I, said, I, I to me i still enjoy it uh, it's, it's fine it's enjoyable it it, the problem and did. the real problem is it's not even that bad the problem is the other two spider-man movies are so good the other two sam Raimi's spider-man movies are both nines you know what i mean uh one and Best like one ever did. yeah because the third one sh- would have like the problem is the third one really should have been a third and fourth movie you know what I mean? Had they not fucked with Sam yeah. Raimi, then they wouldn't have been. A... Well, yeah, like I said, they, they, the, he was just gonna do Sandman, and that's literally all he was gonna do. Oh, but that would have been. I don't think that would have been good either. <laughs> I think that would have been falling and doing flat. the. Well, see, we don't know though because we've never seen the movie, so you can't really yeah, spill off of that. I can't. I can't say <laughs> what I can say is that from the Sandman I saw and from the Sandman I know, much like the Eternals, um, not necessarily mm-hmm. the best performing Spider-Man villain. The other, the, literally every other villain that oh, has I showed up. I I mean, I liked him, honestly. Uh, he's cool, but I'd say, I know, but, so, uh, like, see, objectively opinion, speaking. Was, I, I, honestly, I liked him. Yeah, Sandman's yeah, fine. Like objectively said, speaking, him, so. just like the Eternals, Sandman doesn't sell Spider-Man comics like Electro does or like Venom does. Know, but that's totally fine. Like I said, though, right, I, I like the character. That's yeah, which is cool, that. That, but it doesn't mean the movie would have done well. Which is all I'm saying is that movie didn't, we We don't, don't, (laughs) but based on (laughs) prior information, just like with the Eternals prediction, which was straight up, right? The Eternals prediction came true where it's like, they tried hard and they did a pretty good job, but the the Eternals aren't a sellable title. Like they're not getting an Eternals 2. Yeah, well, I guess, like I said, I I, I, said, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed Sandman. Yeah, Man. that's fine. I, and that's I liked what he was cool. going to do, but it just, yeah, like I said, producers got in the way and yep. added Venom and Gwen Stacy and yes, too yep. much work to do. And, and actually, to tell you the truth, like I said, he didn't like Venom. So, again, created differences. He didn't he didn't even want to do the character. They right. forced and, him, forced his hand, and so he ended up giving them a shit character because it's like, well, yep. you can't put all my heart into it if you're going to make me kind of force no, and, my hand. And then, like I said, I, he <laughs> but, probably should have just... the next film was actually going to do Vulture, actually, right after that um, was going to be the next... They actually just released some uh, digital renders from the company that was doing them. And, uh, yeah, they showed kind of like it was going to be a big old Vulture fight scene in the number four film. I'm not gonna lie. I but think yeah, that's. A, supposed to be five, actually. We'll never know. I think that would have been a bad plan too. I think that they should have switched the double to get to the because then you would have taken six movies to get this to the Sinister Six, and they definitely wouldn't have hung in that long. There's like. But, yeah, but who knows if they would have even done the Sinister Six? He doesn't have a plan. Well, but, true. Yeah, like if said, it even goes to four, were, but yeah, right. My my problem is it, yeah, none of that so. matters because the truth is the film came out and it was bad. It, like it didn't do well. There was no Spider Man four, which could have possibly happened had they stuck to Sam Raimi's vision, or had the foot gone down, there would have been no Spider Man three, and then it wouldn't be a mark on the record either. But it did. It went. It went out. It got produced, and it pretty much got panned all around. Once again, it's cool that you liked it, man. I'm glad for you. It has its its moments. Awesome. I'm not saying it's a bad movie. I'm saying it did badly. Objectively speaking, that movie did badly in theaters. It didn't sell well. None of the above. Same way way that Iron Man 3, right? Not a bad movie necessarily, but just did not perform to the standards of Iron Man 1 and Iron Man 2. As far as critics, audience members... Uh, yeah. further future development and mm-hmm. I wanted it to I wanted it to be great but it just didn't hit the promise the promises that it was uh, uh-huh. that the producers I guess put in because once again Sam Raimi didn't want it but they had three villains in that movie right Green Goblin and Venom and Sandman right was that that yeah, was for well, three yeah and it should have just been Sandman and I, I Green don't Goblin agree with that either, but that's with, fine. Uh... <laughs> like I said, I don't agree with that either. I, th- I personally, for me, a Sandman movie would have been boring because 
Yeah, it was an your, okay person. Yeah, I know, yeah, I know that's a lot totally of people fine. That, and the Marvel group sort of or love Sandman. I mean, but. that's totally fine, and I'm sure they would ding. I'd, I'd love to see how many people outside of Marvel groups in general, cinematic groups, would have cared to see another Sandman movie, right? Because it's cool know, to say that me know. and you like, because I love fucking uh, Howard the Duck and like Modoc, right? Modoc was a great Hulu series for Marvel fans, but was it a great series for non-comic book fans? Because once again, as much as I like being a comic fan, I work, we, we were functioning in mainstream industries now, which means that if it doesn't sell, it doesn't get another uh, season and it doesn't get another copy. Yeah. It's, I, it, it just sucks to say it like that, but that's why I want to see more things like, you know, unfor- unfortunately, I want to see more things pander to a general audience because if we don't do that, we don't get more of these... Uh, more of these adaptions like this because once again imagine like the reason they used to pick on sam raimi is he was uh <laughs> he was basically the f- one of the first of his kind he was one of the first superhero directors right if you think about it like that because what was even before spider-man mm-hmm. nothing no, like series why yeah blade all right blade but that's it. That's it's literally Blade. That's kind of what set and, the storm. All right, and so here's some other shit. Yeah, yeah. But here's my question: What are the Blade movies all directed by the same director? Uh, no, they had. Uh, I can't remember who did the first one. Uh, what's his name? But yeah, no, that's. But remember. so that it doesn't that's matter who did them. Yeah, it doesn't matter who did them. It's just the point is not all of them were done by the same person, so they didn't share a collective vision. Whereas Sam Raimi was the first, like a superhero director right like who was doing a full trilogy movie every movie and was doing well at it so he didn't have the um like for instance if sam raimi were to direct now another trilogy oh he's no yeah yeah, nobody would tell him shit you know what i mean they would leave him alone and let him write his movie and let him make a bunch of money because now the superhero Mm -hmm. genre is established his you know what i mean his movies are now considered classics of the industry which they were anyway once again i i love the sam raimi movies i think they're the best spider-man movies uh which brought me back to my point of earlier where it's like i like tom holland's spider-man the best but the sam raimi movies even with the third one being tacked on on the end right they're still the best trilogy of spider-man movies yeah um, and probably just, probably, maybe, I don't know, this one was pretty good, so maybe not, but I still think Spider-Man 2 might be the best superhero movie of all time. It's still on my list. Yeah, no, it's a pretty good one, yeah, no, uh, yeah, like I said, I watched all the, the movies. Oh, again. yeah, no, I did the same thing, I watched the, all the, uh, Tobey Maguire ones, I watched the Andrew Garfield ones, I watched the old Spider-Man TV show, uh, not the you know the not the live action one but the 90s animated one no one watches the not this japanese live action one (laughs) (laughs) but yeah and that's why i said it's like it's one of those things where it's like individual pieces of the series because that's what i was saying earlier is like i actually the new spider-man movies even this one the one that just came out i think they're they got really weak plots we also like they don't they're not very strong stories to me. I don't know if that makes sense. Um, like I don't um uh, I don't um, I don't know if it's just because they couldn't use, you know, really go in too deep but because again they have to involve them now with the MCU. And I don't like, even think it's that I'm in there and I then Sony like... owns all the rights now too, so we can't even really probably use all of their characters. So Right, but it wasn't you know, about they characters or how they do their stories and how they're going to even incorporate it in, you know, the MCU kind yeah, of Yeah, but all that stuff's licensing and characters and shit. And I'm not, I don't care about licensing and characters. I care about an in- interesting and engaging movement of plot that is like feeling and coerciveness. Whereas like a lot of them, right? Some of them, for example, like Spider-Man 2 is basically what happens when Tony Stark dies, right? Like in a lot of ways, it's, based off that the first spider-man was a little bit better in the sense that it was sculpted around the whole homecoming idea and like you know the vulture etc but we talked about how even that idea got extended into the names and made no real sense 
a couple weeks back. Remember, we were like, No Way Home and Far From Home is all based off of that original Homecoming, mm-hmm. but it was just Homecoming because at the end of the movie, they were at Homecoming. You know what I mean? There doesn't feel like a bigger yeah. plot thread. I don't know. Right, you might, you gotta... All right, I don't know what happened, but the everything went robot. You might have to do it one more time. <laughs> this is so, it's so weird. It's like some parts are arriving before oh, other parts. Oh no, that was it was good there for a second. Okay. Is that better? Yeah. Is that better? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> no, I was just saying, yeah, no, no. Yeah, the the names could have been catchier, that's for sure. I uh, I mean, it's not even really care for any of the Spider-Man names. It's not even they the catchy really names. Kind of go, they didn't really kind of yeah. go for with the story, I, you know, like a, you know, could it right. really make a funner story for me at least, I don't know. That's what I'm saying is none of the stories felt like they were like um purposeful or like well collected if that makes sense like like you said it doesn't feel like the names matched what was going on in the stories what that didn't match the journey he was going on right which i feel like this last one was a bit better about it but even still i felt hints of that where i was like a lot of this was kind of like eh i i do like i said this one was great because i feel like the the one that just came out no way home was Basically, the best way I was trying to describe it to someone was, like, every time they had, like, a question of whether they should or should not do something in the movie, not, like, the characters, but the directors and the producers and shit, they just said, fuck it, and did it, and said, you know, we'll get away with it. And they basically did. They basically do whatever they want. Oh. I think I might have finally lost him. It might have to be a short one, because I'm not sure... He is still there, right? <laughs> oh, I, I just barely heard you again, just a little bit, though. It's all a uh, little brrrr. Maybe. We may, well, if you want, we may have to end it here then. <laughs> yeah, it might, it might have to be a little bit of a short one. That's okay. We got a little bit of a half one in, which is better than nothing. And uh, we really can't spoil too much anyway, you know what I mean? We probably spent more time talking about the other Spider-Man, which is actually good. Because once again, we can't, if we talk too much about this Spider-Man, we'll end up spoiling something. <coughs> and it's only been out for a couple days now, right? Like... So, yeah, probably shouldn't spoil it. <clears throat> but I think I can say with confidence that anybody who's enjoyed, who enjoys Spider-Man would probably enjoy going to watch this movie. Ooh, so maybe you need to go a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll, we're going to end it off here. Yeah, def- definitely just so much to see anyways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So much, so much good to see. So much there to go. Uh, we'll probably not be back next week because it is going to be like the day after Christmas on Sunday. But we will be back probably for the week after that, which is what, New Year's? Yeah, the day after New Year's, which shouldn't be a big issue, right? Are you good for day after New Year's? Oh, I forgot. He's still having the issues. I don't know if he can hear me. Damn connection issues. I wish it would store and packet the data when it wasn't able to properly stream it instead of, like, trying to fucking cram it all in there. Hear me now? Yeah, there you go. Okay, yeah, and I was saying, speaker. For sure. All right, guys. Well, thank. uh, Yeah, go ahead. All righty. Yeah, but thank you everybody for coming and joining in. Uh, We'll catch you next time on our Comic Convo stream, which should be episode one fifty five. We'll hopefully get Izzy back in. On the picture, that way he's not just Knuckles beating up on Sonic. And, uh, yeah, have a great one, guys.
you enjoyed watching or want to support the channel, remember to attack that like button. Subscribe on YouTube, follow on Twitch, or join our Discord using the link on screen or in the description below so that you can get daily updates on all of our uploads and live streams. We know we're not perfect and we can always improve, so please visit our Discord or comment below with a critique or a compliment to let us know how we can improve ourselves. Finally, if you're just starting for more content, you can become an honorary member of 3D Productions at patreon.com slash 3D and get exclusive access for as low as a dollar a month.